Hello, it's Keyshawn Hill Adamson, founder of Boom for Christ.com, a Christian blog site where we break, obliterate, and overcome all of our mountains together. Um, happy Wednesday to you. Today's a special day. What kind of special day could this be? It's my birthday. Go Key. It's my birthday. Go Key. It's my birthday. I'm gonna party like it's my birthday. Yes, today's my birthday. I turned 44 today. And I am super, my hairband is falling off. I am super excited. Why am I so excited? Well, I'm gonna read you my journal entry. Um, super special to me because, well, let me just read. So, December 16th, 2020, grateful Lord, made it to the age of 44 and the first day of this age, I left behind grief, loss, and pain and moved to meaning, joy, and purpose. The war has passed over. Jesus declared, peace be still. 2020, I was able to let go of loved ones long gone in the Lord, made peace with their passing, and freed myself and Jesus of my past. This is the first day of the new day of my life, and now a new chapter begins. This year, began with grief, sadness, and death, and now, walking into the age of 44 for the first time, I'm free. <sighs> free. For 36 years, I've been grieving over decades of loss from the time I was the age of seven. And it started with my grandmother, my beloved grandmother, who I called mommy. And thereafter, I've lost every other person that has ever meant anything to me. One by one, month by month, year by year. And I'm 44 today. So you're talking about 36 years of insurmountable grief, death, and loss and me never having the ability to catch my breath soon. This year, 2020, I entered the year with grief and loss, losing my Aunt Patsy, who was not just family, but she was a big sister to everybody, every younger cousin in the family, um, from my mom to my aunts, other cousins, older cousins. She she was a sister. She was a mentor. She was constant in my life. And that broke me. And prior to that, I was already on my journey of healing from the decades, 36 years of grief and loss. Learning about God's perspective on grief and loss, how he feels about it and how he wants his people to process grief and loss. And I thought when January hit, I had come to a place where I had a great understanding in the Lord on grief and loss, and I was at this great place, and then she passed away, and it challenged everything that I worked so hard on. But what I walked away from is 36 lessons God has taught me from these 30, oh wow, 36 lessons over 36 years on his perspective on grief and loss. And I was able to capture that as I prayed and did my devotion and wrote, I wrote them down on his perspective of loss. So when I buried her cremains in February, I think March, I walked around the cemetery and I, I visited every loved one that was buried there because mostly all 90% of my family is buried there and I can count on four hands. So I was, walk, I was in the cemetery for quite some time and I went by everyone's tombstone and I gave myself permission to grieve, which is something I have never allowed myself to do. And I celebrated their life and I surrendered their fate over to God, which is something I've never done. Even after 
much therapy and just God dealing with me with grief and loss, I did not recognize that inwardly I had never let any of them go. I had held on to the memory and the past, but it was suffocating me. So was I letting them go? No, I wasn't letting them go. But I was making peace with their passing. I was making peace with the things I couldn't change. I was making peace with their fate. And while I did that, and I celebrated their contribution to my life, I thank them out loud. I thank you for this time and that time. And I thank you for telling me this. And I thank you, Lord, for the memories. Thank you. And I release you to your fate, to your destiny, and I free myself. And I did that with every family member. And sometime this month, I was asking myself, because the year started out horrible. And then it went from horrible to worse with the pandemic. But something in this year, and my heart was extremely broken. But somewhere in this year, something has shifted for me. And I felt an unusual sense of peace. I felt like the war within had finally ceased. Something had shifted in my life. And I knew that that struggle, that inner turmoil and struggle that I was feeling all my life had ceased. And I recognized that it was that process of letting go, accepting the things I couldn't change, changing the things I could change, and having the wisdom to know the difference. And instead of me staying in grief and mourning, I began to do the grief work. I began to work it out by talking about my grief, by feeling my grief, by giving myself permission to grieve, by not allowing anyone to tell me that you should be over that by now. No, you should not be. Everyone grieves differently. And for those of you that are grieving out there, don't let anyone tell you different. If your loved one passed away a day ago, a month ago, a week ago, a year ago, years ago, decades ago, don't let anyone tell you that you should be over that. Because grief is an expression of love. Grief is, we grieve because we love. Grief is a natural response, a natural emotion to some loss that you that have happened in your life. Grief doesn't just have to be death, but grief is loss. You lose a boyfriend, you lose your shoe, you lose something that you hold dear, some jewelry. No matter what it is, when you love something and you lose it or it goes away, you feel grief. So for the first time, I've allowed myself to feel. And in my, in my feeling, I was able to deal. And that dealing with God created healing. So I encourage you all today. This is not going to be a sober message, but this is a message of encouragement because I've spent 36 years just holding on to 36 years of baggage, of hurt, of pain, of grief. Today I get to walk into my age of 44 for the first day of my life and I'm looking back and I'm like wow you're not grieving well you always you will always feel some form of grief and sadness over our loss of our loved one but that war within has ceased because I gave myself permission to feel because I allow God to teach me some things that life has seasons and we ought to feel and we ought to grieve. We are also to celebrate all that he's done. And so I encourage you that in your grief and your sadness and your mourning, take an inventory on what God has done. Whatever you're going through, write down your feelings, write down what hurts, talk about it. Don't hide from it because if you hide from it, you're gonna get stuck. I was stuck for 36 years. And it wasn't until I began to face my feelings, was only then I began to free myself through Jesus Christ. So give yourself permission to feel, give yourself permission to deal so you can heal. Write down everything that you feel, let it out. You have to let it out. What you don't let out, it will manifest some way, somehow in your life. Mine manifested in obesity. I did not know it. You can see the obesity, but you couldn't see the war. 
and I was in a war with my own grief. Give yourself permission to feel so you can heal. So, we do have something to look forward to in spite of it all. As long as Jesus is king of the universe, supreme over all hope, we still have unspeakable hope. So I am truly, truly, truly excited today. I'm truly excited today because I entered in the year 44 free. So I encourage you, I encourage you all to hold on to God's hand. He will comfort you. He will guide you. And he will lead you to victory. Don't let go. And don't give up. Press forward because the darkest part of the night is right before dawn. Your dawn is coming. My dawn, after 36 years, I'm just seeing the light. It doesn't have to take that long for some of you. Some of you, God is speaking to you right now that he wants you to be able to let go. Let go. No longer allow that thing to steal, kill, or destroy your life or anything concerning your life anymore. We're not saying let go of legacies. We're not saying let go of loved ones. But what I am saying is let go and surrender that thing to God so you could be free to walk in your purpose. He promises us he will never leave us or forsake us. So I encourage you all just to hold on to God's hand and give him that thing that's holding you hostage because he has a purpose and a plan for your life right now if you let it go. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are holding on to things. Let it go in the name of Jesus. We break, 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 break any one who is held hostage right now to a pain, a trauma, a loss. That Jesus, you come right in and you, you break it, break it, break it, break it, break it right now in your name, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you for that you'll that you will be with us, you'll guide us, and you're breaking free for us, moving on our behalf, always, always, always. I glorify God today. I celebrate life today. You celebrate life today. Choose to celebrate life, whether it's your birthday or not. Celebrate life today because it's a gift. I love you. Continue to join me for boomforchrist.com where there is great content on breaking free and overcoming. From my heart to yours, you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a blessed New Year in spite of it all. We look up, we look up to Jesus because he's fighting and moving on our behalf. Love you, God bless you. Mm -hmm. Boomforchrist.com. Thank you.